In this episode of the show, we will be introducing the character Margarita Loan Teal. Here's a picture of her from the games. Now, in the source material, this character is described as having a figure that outshines statues. She was fair-haired, tall, and often wore a green dress with a plunging neckline. So, let's take a quick look at what the cosplay ladies have been up to, and bloody hell! Calm down, are you trying to kill me? God, the cosplay girls really go for it. Once again, the women doing cosplay are on point. I mean, that's a look. The character in the box was described in the following passage. Marguerite Loantil emerged from a pool with a splash, spraying water everywhere. Siri couldn't stop herself looking. She'd seen Yennefer naked on several occasions and hadn't imagined anyone could have a more shapely figure. She was wrong. Even marble statues of goddesses and nymphs would have blushed at the sight of Marguerite Loantil undressed. So with that said, do you want to see who the great minds behind the Netflix Witcher cast as this character? Do you? Are you sure you want to see what they did this time? Brace yourself, here we go. Yep, that's her. Now, now, would you say this person matches the description I've just read from the books? Yes? No? The changes Netflix have made to the sorceresses betray to me that they don't really understand the story or characters at all. Because I found this quote from Lauren Hisrick, the showrunner of the Netflix Witcher. I think that any time you're doing casting and you're casting something that has a lot of existing fans, you're going to get a lot of opinions about whether it matches fans' vision. And Lauren, it has nothing to do with the fans' vision. The characters were described in the books, and what you've done doesn't match that description at all. The books expressly described a statuesque blonde woman, and you cast a plus-sized non-blonde lady. There seems to be a real push in the casting to the Netflix Witcher to make the show in favour of body positivity. Only for women though, the men still have to be in good shape for the female staff to look at, and if they came in fat, they'd be gone faster than Henry Cavill after he tried to make the show law accurate. Because don't forget, body positivity is for women, not for lazy white men with dad bods. Women's beauty standards have to be challenged. Male beauty standards have to be reinforced. Women being objectified is demeaning. Men being objectified is empowering. It's easy to understand. Just put yourself in the mindset of being a complete hypocrite. Netflix removed the book scene of Marguerite emerging unclothed from the water and now instead have the collected sorceresses leering at a half-naked muscle man while making lewd remarks like the stereotype of a woman passing a building site. <laughs> Hands off, he's mine. <laughs> I wasn't planning on using my hands. Now, the original scene served a narrative purpose in having a character undressed. It showed how the sorceresses used their attractiveness to manipulate people. What does this replacement scene do, apart from showing the sorceresses to be drunk and acting like wine aunts at a Chippendale show? The showrunners looked at the book scene and only saw the undressed woman, thought it was exploitative, which it maybe was in some ways, and saw no deeper than skin deep, because they tried to flip the genders, and that's what the scene they made is purely skin deep. They took women, hundreds of years old in the story of the show, and made them look juvenile. They also would ever do this scene with the genders reversed, so they're hypocrites. They object to a woman's attractiveness being used in the show, but are fine doing it to men repeatedly. And they also seem to have changed Marguerite's character to sassy and that's about it. An interesting book character has been turned into a stereotype. If Netflix were trying to make a show that appealed to men by putting attractive women on screen, they would listen to what men find attractive and then put that on screen, instead of trying to tell men what they should find attractive. And incidentally, women as a group are very bad at gauging what men find attractive in women. Women usually describe their ideal body type as being quite thin. They think men want women to be slightly curvier than that. What men actually want is for women to be a lot curvier. To simplify, women are thinking Kate Moss, men are thinking Kate Upton. Men as a group are not much better at gauging what women find attractive in men either. Men as a group describe their ideal body type as being very muscular. They think women want that, but slightly less muscular. And women, when asked, want men to be considerably less muscular. Men are thinking Chris Bumstead. A lot of women, for some unknown reason, are thinking Harry Styles. 
I fail to see why the human body or human intimacy, how love between two people is a bad thing to show on TV, but seeing people being impaled on a sword twice an episode is a-okay. There's barely any intimacy at all in season three, even when it would make perfect narrative sense. Scenes that were intimate in the books have been cut out. Geralt and Yennefer's story is essentially a love story at heart, so Netflix have cut all of the romance out of a love story. So how did they end up with such relentlessly horrible casting? This is all due to the efforts of The Witch's casting director, one Sophie Holland. She started out as an actress and according to this interview, it didn't work out for many reasons. She says, not least of all, she was probably terrible. Her words, not mine. She goes on, but I love the industry so much and somebody said to me, if you want money, you should be an agent. And if you want power, you should be a casting director. Sophie Holland chose to become a casting director. A casting director using casting, in her words, to seek diversity and to change the perceptions of the audience, i.e. activism again. She's not casting people based on their talent or experience. The woman that she cast is Yennefer in the show. It's claimed in this interview got the job on The Witcher and that audition was the first she ever did. The actress does not match the book description of the character, had little to no experience, so the casting director is not casting people to match the source material and be true to it, or to make a good end product. She's casting people for activism. She's gone from being a probably terrible actress to being a probably terrible casting director. She goes on. In the book, she's, meaning Yennefer, described as the most beautiful woman in the world. This was a few years ago, and I'd like to think things have changed. But when you think about people's unconscious bias, especially in the fantasy world, it felt like these worlds were predominantly white. And I remember saying, I feel like we need to challenge what people think of as the standard of beauty. And having a woman of colour in this role does incredibly powerful things to the people watching. And that's activism again. The sheer arrogance is staggering to me to have the gall the sheer effrontery to take an already successful piece of art, because if a book gets an adaptation, that book is a success. Though in the case of The Witcher, it's kind of unclear what should be adapted into a TV show. The books or the games. It seems the games are what propelled the IP to worldwide fame. But they'll take this piece of artistic endeavour and say, I can improve it, in spite of Hollywood's repeated failure to do just that. They'll take this beloved work with an existing fan base and change almost everything about it. Then they'll be faux surprised and outraged when fans of that work are not happy with what they've done. At this rate, Hollywood has got such a fall coming and it's entirely self-inflicted. Here's an idea. If you want a story with all of those things in it, the representation and the activism, and feel the Witcher source material doesn't have enough of those things, maybe you should go and write that story that you wish the Witcher was. But you can't, can you? That's the problem. And when you try, you end up with something like Witcher Blood Origin. The sorceresses were the way that they were in the books for a reason. They could pick the way that they looked on the outside. Despite being in some cases hundreds of years old, they all had an earthly beauty and youthful appearance. Yet Marguerite in the series appears to have chosen a body shape somewhere in between Lizzo and one of the band The Weather Girls. In the books, they used their beauty to manipulate. They were scheming and petty, subtle and dangerous. They'd all been alive for a very long time and had grown jaded and bored. Each of them wanted to be the best, the most beautiful, the most popular, the most powerful, so they largely hate each other, like their mean schoolgirls or sisters. There's a juxtaposition in the books between their external beauty and their internal ugliness. A dwarf.